Really the aim of all oxidative conditions of alcohols is to establish a good leaving group at oxygen. And the grand idea of the Swern oxidation is to place a particular good leaving group on the carbonyl oxygen, the S plus CH32 group, or dimethyl sulfide. And so we want to set up an intermediate, for example, from a primary alcohol, where we have this S dimethyl group with a positive charge on sulfur attached to oxygen. And we can see why this would be a great leaving group, since cleavage of the OS bond towards sulfur would leave sulfur neutral. Once we've established this intermediate, elimination in this case from a primary alcohol would give an aldehyde. And aldehydes don't react further under these conditions since we can't reestablish this dimethyl sulfide leaving group at the aldehyde oxygen. So the net result of the Swern oxidation on a primary alcohol is the production of an aldehyde, and these conditions are also effective for the conversion of secondary alcohols into ketones. And one thing worth mentioning that we haven't actually pointed out yet is that tertiary alcohols do not react under oxidation conditions. In order to oxidize an alcohol to a carbonyl compound, we need at least one hydrogen linked to the alcohol carbon, and tertiary alcohols don't have that, so they don't react. Before we dive into the mechanism of the Swern oxidation, let's take a look at the reagents involved, since there are some rather exotic looking molecules in the reagent list here. The first is a compound containing oxygen and sulfur called dimethyl sulfoxide, and a useful resonance structure of dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO, as we'll call it for short, places negative charge on the oxygen atom and positive charge on the sulfur. So DMSO, on some level, is an analog of acetone. The SO bond is similar to the carbonyl group in something like acetone, but it's polarized toward oxygen, and this O minus S plus resonance structure is going to be useful for us as we think about how this reaction works. The second reagent in the first stage is COCl quantity 2, and this means that the two carbons in the COCl groups are linked to one another. It's kind of a double acyl chloride with the two carbonyl carbons linked to one another. So as you might imagine, this is a very strongly electrophilic molecule at these carbons bearing the carbonyl groups. This is called oxalyl chloride. It's a derivative of oxalate in which the OH or O- groups in the case of oxalate have been replaced with chlorines. And the idea behind oxalyl chloride is that we've got two very electrophilic carbons in this reagent. Knowing that oxalyl chloride is going to act as our electrophile, we can then turn to DMSO and think about how this molecule can act as a nucleophile. And this pre-electrophile formation happens before the alcohol gets involved directly. Take a look at DMSO. Which atom in this molecule do you think is the best nucleophile, which is the most nucleophilic? Based on the resonance structure we have here, the O- looks like a great candidate. And sure enough, in the first step of this mechanism, the O- adds to one of the carbonyl carbons of oxaloid chloride. Nucleophilic addition establishes an intermediate in which we have an anionic oxygen with a chlorine in the beta position. So we have a good leaving group beta to an anionic oxygen bearing a lone pair, and we can engage in beta elimination here. Beta elimination regenerates the carbonyl group and establishes a potentially good leaving group at the sulfur with an oxygen connected to a carbonyl which is connected to an acyl chloride group. Attack of chloride at that positively charged sulfur sets off a cascade of electron flow which from the sulfur's perspective looks like an SN2 process. And the intermediate that's generated here from the sulfur's perspective looks like the dimethyl sulfide plus group connected to chlorine. The byproducts here are carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and chloride anion. And notice now what we have at the sulfur. We've got the two methyl groups attached, but we also have a good leaving group in the form of chlorine. Think about how the alcohol might get involved here now. The alcohol has a nucleophilic oxygen atom, and the sulfur atom is very clearly electrophilic with positive charge and a good leaving group attached to it. An SN2 elementary step links the dimethyl S plus group to the alcohol oxygen. And the intermediate that results is getting very close to our goal, if you look at the upper right of the slide, of connecting this dimethyl S plus group to the alcohol oxygen. What we need to do next is deprotonate that group, and the added base, triethylamine, can do this quite easily. 
We're finally now at the key intermediate in which we've established that key OS bond and the alcohol oxygen is neutral. And the dimethyl S plus group is of course now a good leaving group. At the alcohol carbon, we have two hydrogens which are acidified by the presence of the leaving group linked to oxygen. And deprotonation of one of these hydrogens by the added amine base kicks off an E2 elimination elementary step. As we've seen previously, elimination is the essence of oxidation, right? This generates the aldehyde product and a couple of byproducts, dimethyl sulfide, the conjugate base of the leaving group, if you like, and the conjugate acid of the amine base, HNR3+. So there's a lot going on in the Swern oxidation, but to kind of chunk it out, let's look at the mechanism as a whole. The first stage involves formation of the active electrophile, which is this chlorosulfonium species with the SCL bond and the two methyl groups linked to sulfur with the positive charge. That's an awesome electrophile, and that leads to the second stage in which the OS bond forms through an SN2 step, and after a proton transfer, there's an elimination that generates the aldehyde. In the electrophile formation step, what happens in the first two elementary steps, the nucleophilic addition and beta elimination, is a pattern we'll see again many, many times. This is a nucleophilic acyl substitution, the substitution of the oxygen of DMSO for the chlorine in oxalochloride that gets kicked off as a leaving group in the beta elimination step. So that's a useful way to think about the first two elementary steps. In the third step, we form the active electrophile, the electrophile gets together with the alcohol in the alcohol oxidation stage, and an elimination ultimately gives the carbonyl CO double bond.